Welcome back. So, in the previous lectures, we've talked about sexual behavior. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about sexual differentiation. Uh, what makes us men and women, and how how does that happen? So, how does our body determine what sexual characteristics to develop? Well, sexual differentiation is the process by which individuals develop either male-like or female like bodies and behavior. For most of us, but not for all of us as you'll see, sexual determination occurs early. In mammals, every egg carries an X chromosome from the mother, and then sex is determined by whether the sperm from the father is carrying an X or a Y chromosome. If it's an X, the child will develop as a female, whereas if it's a Y, the child will be a male. At least this is how it usually happens, as you'll see. So how does this happen? Early in development, children have indifferent gonads, which is why the sex of the baby cannot be determined early on by an ultrasound. However, this is changed by the SRY gene. The SRY gene is a gene on the Y chromosome that directs the developing gonads to become testes. If someone has the SRY gene, then the cells in the indifferent gonads begin making SRY proteins, which causes the cells in the core of the indifferent gonads to develop into testes. If there is no Y chromosome, or if the SRY gene is defective, then no SRY protein is produced. If this happens, then ovaries form in the place of the testes. So the main thing here is um, developing as a female is kind of the default. You need this um, SRY gene to lead to the creation of the SRY proteins in order for this for the individual not to develop female. And you'll see why that is important later on. So whether testes or ovaries form is an essential part of development because it sets forth a domino effect um, caused by gonadal hormones. The gonads secrete hormones that direct sexual differentiation within the body. The testes are very active during this time, producing several hormones that are important for sexual differentiation. However, the ovaries produce very little hormone. Thus, what we see is um, that in the presence of high levels of testosterone and other male hormones, male, male characteristics occur. In the absence, female characteristics occur. So again, the default is really um, developing as a female. So the early fetus has a um, genital turbicle that can, be, that can form either into a clitoris or into a penis as well as two sets of ducts that connect the indifferent gonads to the outer body wall. These ducts are the Wolfian ducts and the Mullerian ducts. The Wolfian duct is what will develop into male structures if testes are present um, in the embryo, whereas the Mullerian ducts will develop into the female reproductive structure, so your fallopian tubes, uterus, and inner vagina, if the testes are not present. The system is masculinized by two hormones, testosterone, which promotes the development of the Wolfian ducts, and anti-Mullerian hormone, which, as you can guess from the, um, from the name, um, induces remission of the Mullerian system. In the absence of testes that produce these hormones, the Wolfian ducts regress and the Mullerian ducts develop. So again, the default is female unless you have the testes present creating these two hormones. So um, again, you have the anti-Mullerian hormone and you also have testosterone that are important for this process. So this is just a quick look um, at sexual differentiation at eight weeks gestation and at 15 weeks gestation. So you can see at eight weeks gestation, you can see some small differences, but it looks pretty similar. But you get to see, you can see much more differentiation once we get out to about 15 weeks and certainly further into development. 
so testosterone also masculinizes other non-wolfian structures such as the strotum and the penis uh, these effects are impacted greatly by the enzyme 5a reductase which is an enzyme that converts testosterone into dihydrotestosterone also known as dht um, which is a more potent androgen that is needed to produce genitalia so without it testosterone is only able to masculize the genitalia partially and if androgens such as testosterone are absent altogether then the body will again develop to um, developing a um, or it will default I should say to developing a female uh, labia and clitoris so as is the case with many of these chapters we always discuss what happens when things go wrong or when de development occurs differently in sexual differentiation this is a complex chain of events well there is a complex chain of events that must occur and because of this there are many possible places where the process can run into problems so one example of this is Turner syndrome which occurs when an individual has only one sex chromosome a single X sex chromosome since there's only one X the individual develops as a female given that there can be no SRY gene and no masculinization can take place there are a few characteristic abnormalities that come with Turner syndrome including short stature uh, swelling broad chest low hairline low set of ears and a webbed neck which you can really see in this picture here um, the top picture is actually before surgery to fix it and the bottom picture is actually after that surgery women with Turner syndrome often have sexual dysfunction including um, amenorrhea which is the absence of a menstrual cycle and sterility it also increases the risk of many health problems such as hypothyroidism uh, heart disease diabetes vision and hearing problems you also can see um, cognitive deficits um, can be observed especially difficulties with visual spatial mathematical and memory abilities there's also congenial adrenal um, hyperplasia this is a genetic disorder in which there's a mutation for the genes that control enzymes so what happens is the adrenal gland fails to produce sufficient corticosteroids producing instead considerable amounts of androgens so in etsets individuals so in individuals who would normally be female this can result in an intermediate um, development um, between normal female and normal males as the androgens lead to more masculine development than would normally occur this results in an inner sex appearance as you can see um, and the appearance differs depending on the number of androgens but again something like this is what you'll see where you have an enlarged clitoris and a fused labia um, similar like this is very common if you have greater levels of androgens you can actually have the development of a functional average sized penis uh, but you'd have no sperm development the disorder often leads to um, insufficient sex hormone production so hormone replacement therapy is often used uh, cortisone is often also prescribed in order to suppress the androgens that lead to the masculine characteristics surgery is also um, recommended in order to correct the inner sex appearance and um, lastly we have um, cloacal estrophy I'm probably mispronouncing that but it's my best attempt so this is a very rare one in every 400,000 alive birth so a very rare um, severe defect where boys are, boys are born without testes um, or sorry let me say that again boys are born with testes but no penis it's actually far more involved than that but for our purposes we will focus on the impact in sexual differentiation so in these cases um, it had been previously recommended that these individuals should have sex reassignment surgery and be raised as girls however of the 14 cases um, where they followed and this occurred 
18, or sorry, of the 14, eight eventually declared themselves to be v boys, even though some of them were unaware that they had their sexual reassignment early on. Um, so thus, there seems to be more about sexual identity than just the plumbing. Um, relatedly, you may have heard the story of David Reimer, uh, which, is, which was documented in the book as Nature Made Him. In his case, it wasn't a genetic issue, but rather his penis was accidentally removed during circumcision. Thus, the decision was made to do a sexual reassignment surgery and raise him as a girl. The psychologist who oversaw the case declared it a success. Um, however, at age nine, he started to reject this identity, and he began living as a male at age 15. He sadly ended up dying by suicide, and though it's hard to say whether the sexual reassignment had anything to do with um, with it, um, because he had a family history of suicide, he had many stressors at the time, including being unemployed and having his wife leave him, but it certainly could have added extra stress. So all this is to say that while it isn't the only factor, nature plays a strong role in sexual assignment, even if the gonads are removed early in life. As we discussed in the hormone chapter, in order for hormones to have an effect, you need to have receptors for the hormone. In androgen insensitivity syndrome, that's this bottom one here, um, this occurs in XY individuals where the androgen receptors do not respond to testosterone. So you have normal amounts of testosterone, but the person is not receptive to it. They don't, they don't sense it because the receptors are not working properly. So because of this, um, these individuals will develop testes because of the SRI, SRY proteins and SRY gene that we discussed earlier but they don't respond to the testosterone produced by the testes. So because of this, the body defers to the female gender and the child looks like a normal female. They will develop breasts around puberty, things of that nature. Now you may wonder why breasts develop when these individuals will have low estrogen levels. It appears or it seems to be that breast development depends on the estrogen to testosterone ratio. So for individuals who are insensitive to androgen, breasts will still develop because there's essentially no testosterone. Even though it's present, it's not actually making an effect. This disorder is often not identified until around puberty when a menstrual cycle fails to develop because again, these women have no ovaries or uterus. Um, so unfortunately they are um, and fertile because of this.